The ever sanguine Ian is off to the Southern Hemisphere. Once again, Claire will be left to monitor progress on site. So I'll wait for a few days now. Wait for a lot of days. Yeah. It's more time zone when you go to Australia. It's the annoying thing. Will you miss Dermot's phone calls? Where you talk about everything apart from the house. Don't need to talk about the house. We've been all covered. Just have to pay for it. Then... I hate being away. I miss you all the time. Have fun. I will. Talk to you tonight, all right? See you later. Give me have a, a safe when Ian first bought the house, um, we were very, very early days in seeing each other. Um, it had only been a couple of months. So it was something I was very excited for him. Wanted to be able to help him, but obviously didn't see too much or didn't look too far into the future of helping him out to the, to the scale that I have or, you know, had my own dressing room or anything like that. In Ian's absence, Claire has found herself having to make a lot of decisions. I think I'm handling it okay. I don't know whether Ian would say the same. Uh, I suppose dealing with Dermot's always a task, but it's always good fun. Before he left, Ian increased the original specifications and the budget with the addition of an underfloor heating system that will extend throughout the ground floor. And so, like the sorcerer to Dara's bedraggled apprentice, Dermot oversees the final magical transformation. I don't mind this. Yeah. I don't mind this here now. Yeah, yeah. It's this. It's just to get rid of this stripe. But there's something nice about that now. There's a nice wave in that. There's a nice... I, like... I just need to talk to you about the concrete wall. I like the... The only bit I don't like is the, is the stripe, is the join. Yeah, yeah. To me, it looks like a wall that is not ready. Doesn't look anything like that picture he showed us. No, it looks nothing like the picture he showed us. But I can take a photograph and send it across to you. I just wanted you to see it before he came home. Yeah, if you do that now, I can have a quick look at it. A month later, with the wall finessed to the nth degree, Ian is back on site. Dermot prepares to bask in the warm glow of his client's approval. Morning, Ian. Morning. How are you? I'm good. You're admiring your concrete wall? Just having a look at it now, yeah. What do you think? I'm still not convinced it's what you originally had intended. Oh yeah, no it is. Really? Yeah, this is this is exactly what I want. Now that it's come out and I see how how inconsistent it is, it, it's not really what I was expecting. I imagined I'd a really clean concrete piece. Okay. Which it's not. No. At the moment you're looking at it in amongst a sea of unfinished concrete that was never meant to be exposed. It just looks like all the rest of it. When that's the only concrete element in the house, I think it'll look amazing. It looks like you're still waiting to finish it. I don't like when two foot of the edging looks like it's fallen off. We've got this concrete that's all over the place. I thought you'd like it. I know the look you're going for, but I'm just not sure if we've got it. At this stage, Dermot can't afford to lose his client's trust or his architectural mojo. Major decisions are hanging in the balance, including the design of a new kitchen. Once again, Dermot has an imposing statement in mind. I was thinking... We're not of, having a concrete kitchen. No, we're not having a concrete kitchen. No, there's no more concrete going into this house, trust me. I was thinking um, kind of one colour, kind of black. Our kitchen extends from where the stud wall comes out there over to about here. Yeah. OK, and I was going to see if we could try and make this like one big built-in wall. I really believe that a kind of a really chunky, solid, dark coloured, monolithic kitchen and fitted furniture in this house would work really, really well. I am 100%. That's up there in my head and it looks cool. What do you think of kind of just doing it in one strong colour, the whole thing? No, I think all black's too much. Normally, with something like the kitchen, I would sit here and push it and push it and push it. I can't do that today. See, I, I don't like this. The thing that I asked him to take a leap of faith on, the concrete wall, he doesn't like that. So I'm on a back foot today. That's a clinical environment. To me, that's quite cold. I just can't sit in this. No, no, guys, you, no, 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 you're wrong. I think that's horrible. Yeah. I can't do that. Because the stuff that I've asked him to see inside my head, the concrete wall, he still doesn't like. I think the dream is over for your monolithic kitchen. <laughs> I think it is, you know what I mean? I don't think pushing people on a day like today when they don't like the concrete wall is, is the right thing to do. I need to change tact. I don't know what way I'm going to change it. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I need to do something. And I need to do something quick. 
To salvage what remains of his vision, Dermot takes Ian to a house in Rat Mines. Designed by Grace Keeley and Michael Pike of GKMP Architects, with the initial scheme by Sterren O'Shea Architects, the finish is largely defined by, yes, you guessed it, exposed concrete. I have decided to bring you here today, right, because I think you're a bit anxious about the concrete wall, okay? I think once it's up against all of the kind of the really nice surfaces, it works really well. You're a stained stone. So I really like it. Do you? Well, I really like this room, yeah. I think it's really nice. So what do you think of the concrete? Yeah, it's, it's, it's lovely. It's really nice contrast to the... When you see to the it, clean white. Yeah, yeah. Slap, when you see it up against things that are really pristine, it, it, it actually makes it look really beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And it's actually a really modern look. Yeah. It's very similar to your house in, in the fact that we've just got glazing concrete. Are you a little bit more convinced? Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at the consistency of it now and, and how, how they've done it. When you're here, right, that is the same edge as our concrete wall. This right. is polished. Right. I think something like that would look good. Okay, well, I, I, well, what do you think? Well, I like the finish that it is now. How that concrete settles is leaving it to chance. And that's what I love about it. And that's the bit that Ian doesn't like. Because Ian, in his job, cannot leave anything to chance. In what he does, if he leaves something to chance, it could be catastrophic. I don't mind polishing it up. Honestly, don't mind polishing it up. But I really like it the way it is. It's, it's like when you get to know somebody and the defects that you saw in somebody. Or it's the, love, is the it? It's love with the wall. <laughs> it's it's I, love. I would love Love is wall. blind. Yeah. Dermot gave quite a good uh, deep and in-depth explanation as to his love and personal feelings towards concrete. It all got very deep, so I, I just thought I'd leave him to it. It's not how the concrete was sold to me. I'm glad Dermot did sell it to me because it's not something I would have ever put in. I'm just not buying that the imperfections are part of it. Am I falling in love with concrete? Um, no, I, I haven't yet. There may be no love, but at least there's a grudging respect. A good architect can work with that. Did so you tell him? <laughs> he seems to think that Ian was fully aware of all these decisions, and I beg to differ. I think if you change it, it'll, it'll look really bad. It looks like a door, so what? But it already looks bad. It is a door. It's a sliding door that has been fixed. As Ian prepares for yet another long-haul flight, the renovation of his house in Drogheda is finally drawing to a close. With the issue of the concrete wall resolved, it's all blue skies ahead. You're going to be busy. Something to do when I'm away. True. I'm jet lagged. Awake in the middle of the night. <laughs> Big paint colours and tiles. Wow, how your life has changed. Yeah. So how's it been with Derma when I've been away, is he? I'd say for him it's quite frustrating if he comes to me with like a major decision and I'm like, I can't give you an answer. Ian's either in the air or in a different country. I think you're dealing quite well with him. I'm trying to. A few days later, a large consignment of windows arrives on site. Two contrasting designs supplied by different manufacturers. One replicates the 1930s style of the original frames, the other reflects the more contemporary feel of the new extension. Claire will be first to see them. Hey, 
Hi, Claire. Hello. Well, what do you think? Outside's amazing. Love the other windows. Love yes. this. Okay. This is different to what I thought. Okay, what do you think it's going to be like? Do you remember you talked about frameless glass? I did, yes. When did that change? With the budget. I expected to have the concrete wall with a seamless window in it, but it just looks like two massive amounts of timber frame windows stuck to an unfinished, unpainted concrete wall. And that's just being really, really blunt about it. If it's something that was budgetary and that was put in, fine but it's not what was pitched. And I think it's the exact same thing as a concrete wall. That's fine if that's what has to happen, but don't say, you know, oh, it's exactly what we'd agreed on. It's not. So you made the decision on that. I made the call on that. As an architect, I think it looks better to leave the windows as is because the frames are the same size throughout the whole room. The bottom rail, which is the bottom section of timber, lines the whole way through. Are you sure that was confirmed with Ian and Ian knows that there was that amount of timber going in? Did so you tell him? I, 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 I thought I went through it with him, yeah. He seems to think that Ian was fully aware of all these decisions and I beg to differ. It definitely wasn't iterated to him of the amount of timber that was going to be in there because he wouldn't have agreed to that. And I know that. But then we have to take it out. If I didn't explain what was happening enough, then this is my fault. Part of what my job is to communicate things to people and make sure that they understand what they're getting. And if that's not what they thought they were getting, I'll have to pay for the windows to be replaced. If the reason you're putting it in is to match that. No, I take that out and put glass. OK, then we have to do that. OK. Ooh. I'm kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place because I actually think that they look much better. Hello. Hey, how are you? Good. Windows have arrived. They just don't look good. They look really, really oh, right. bad, actually, yeah. Did he say why he did it or He said he went through it with you and you agreed. No, he definitely didn't say it to me about it. I didn't think that, but I think you'll agree with me whenever you come home. But I think you're going to have a fight in your hands with Dermot. No, there'll be no fight. We'll have a chat. <laughs> a quiet chat. Um, OK, we'll see a flight and I will see you when you get home. With just three weeks of the build remaining, Ian's back to check on progress and meet Dermot for a chat about those redesigned frames. Leads everywhere, this is a good sign. When that Any goes in, imagine how bright this is gonna be. Yeah, it'll be a lot of light. Be a good room. For now, the upstairs exists largely in Claire's imagination. It'll look great though. So this is a walk-in wardrobe, is it? No, it's a dressing room. There's a massive difference. So? Yeah. Where's the bed go? Here, but you'll still have wardrobe, vanity. Be nice. This is kind of nearly the nicest room, though. Exactly. <laughs> My room. Morning, guys. Morning, Dama. How are you? Good, thanks, Shane. Good to see you. Hi, I'm great. How are I'm you? good. What's the story? Well, we've just talked about windows today, don't we? Or lack thereof. Or lack thereof. <laughs> okay, right. So, last time we were here, you really didn't like the windows. You didn't like these two in particular. You have no problem with these ones. No. Nope. The shape and style of these yeah, ones. Yeah, they look great. But you didn't like these ones. And I've been thinking about it. I said, look, we can change them. There's no problem in changing them. And there isn't, mm -hmm. okay? But I suppose I think if we do change them, we'd be a bit of a mistake. One of the really kind of key lines for me is this bottom rail. So, at the moment, we have a bottom rail that runs the whole way through there and, and lines up. You can't have timber that's that thick on one side, timber that's that thick on the other. You need to be able to read every piece of timber in a line that, that creates a horizontal line, that it all needs to be the same. The whole reason you want to keep this is so For that this the, all ties the, in. The bottom rail there. We've compromised light and a look for in order of all the lines in the room to match up, which apart from the two of us, because we've been made so aware of it now, yeah. I don't think anyone else walking in would go, that doesn't line up. But do you not think we're making this look like a door to match the doors? Yeah. Why would thing? you make a window look like a door what to match the doors? I see, I don't you want see a it. window to be a window. I don't see it as a door to you. There was a guy here yesterday looking for the handle on it. <laughs> yeah. It looks like a door, so what? It is a door. It's a sliding door that has been fixed. It's not functional whatsoever. It's, it's purely for aesthetics. I don't like the aesthetic of it. It doesn't do anything, it doesn't move, it doesn't slide, it doesn't tilt. It looks like it's supposed to slide. It looks like it's supposed to be a door and it looks like it's supposed to open, but there's no function to it. I think the alternative to it will be worse. Can we go and look at somewhere where there's a lot of timber used in, a, in what is essentially a glass box? Yeah. And, see, and then reserve judgment till then, okay. and then whatever you decide, I'll be happy with. You'll okay. go with that. If I can't persuade them by the end of today, 
we're going to make a decision that will affect the look of this house and the feel of this house that I think is wrong and I have no control over that. And so, Dermot takes Ian and Claire to see a house designed by John Feely in Glasnevin, North Dublin, with a timber-framed aesthetic similar to the one he's planned for their extension. This is the kitchen space I wanted to bring you to, designed by a friend of mine, John Feely. And there is an abundance of thick-framed timber everywhere. Do you like it? I love it, but it's not. I'm only asking if you <laughs> like it. I didn't ask you for any more than that. No, I think it's amazing. It is really, really well done. Do you not notice, though, that where there is thick pieces of wood. Mm -hmm. It's not fussy. There's not four layers. There's not different lines. It's no. solid. The windows are framed as windows and yeah. the doors are framed as doors. That's what I was just going to say. But they're at a different level. So there's the window seat goes in, in between. But I suppose what I was trying to but show you... But there's no level here. Well, there is. You see, there's... So this line comes the whole way through, but then it steps up here to form a window seat. Yeah. So and then they become windows. And then they become windows. Which is kind of what we're going for in ours. No, but they're different levels. I'm glad you brought us here. Thanks a lot. We're still looking at this as an individual window, a concrete wall, another individual window, and then a sliding door. I don't see it like that. I see a sliding door that actually wraps the whole way around the three walls, and we've cut out a segment and slotted in a concrete wall. Really? Like, it's not a big deal to make. But it doesn't work as it is for me. But I think if you... I'd rather have more glass and it doesn't work than less glass and it doesn't work. Yeah, I agree right. with that. Because it just doesn't work at the moment. The whole You've point got this... of it was to have light and glass. A lot of it falls down to as well, you know, is it great to look at or do you want to live in it? And I'm sure from a design point of view, Dermot is possibly right. If you got all the architects together, they'd want all the lines going this way and that way. But for us sat there looking at it every day, yeah. I think it would look better without. I think if you change it, it'll, it'll look really bad. But it, it already looks bad. But I don't think it does. I think it does. I think it does. Do you? Yeah. yeah. I'm the architect. I'm the person that they've asked, can you design up a space for us? I think this is right. I can see what the alternative's like, and it's not as good as what's there. So what would you do? Well, I would have initially gone with what we discussed, which was floating glass. We're now trying to rectify that and get as much glass out of it as possible. But we don't need to get as much glass out of it. But that's what we want. OK, what I'm struggling with is to understand the reasons why we're changing what is a perfectly good window that really works to something that won't work. We just want to put more glass into it. That's it. I think it'll be the wrong decision. I'll take the heat if it's the wrong decision. OK. I think. <laughs> it's disappointing when you lose. It's frustrating when you lose, when you don't need to lose. But you do lose. Timber's gone. It's not a so what moment at the moment, but it will be tomorrow. It has to be. Otherwise, the building will never get finished. As Dermot relents, the heavy frames are removed and replacements are ordered, delivered and fitted. With that lingering bone of contention finally buried, the last stage of the build gets underway. After 23 weeks, Ian and Claire's new home is complete. A formerly run-down 1930s semi-D reborn as a thoroughly modern residence, still retaining all its former scale and charm, now enhanced by the generous living space of its sleek new extension. A seamless blend of early 20th century elegance and 21st century style. This was a great house from the very start. A really simple house, a three bed semi, but lovely proportioned rooms. My big thing was I don't want to destroy this at all. Instead of being a renovation, it was kind of a restore and just a reinvention of the existing house. You can tend to put on a new extension that almost dominates the existing house. I really didn't want it to be that. I wanted whatever was put onto the back of the house to almost sit quietly and let the existing house be the most important thing. I think they sit quite happily up against each other. I think I would have failed on this project. For me, if I'd walked back in here on a day like today and this house felt dramatically different. This room, I suppose, was all about just keeping it the way it was, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 And I think we've managed to do that. One thing that we really want to achieve is to keep the old part as it was, but then bring the new part, make, make that very modern. I think it's, it's worked out much better than I expected it to. It's been a lot of fun working with Dermot. It's, kept me, it's been busy, 
you, you do sort of have to sleep with one eye open and keep, keep an eye what he's what he's doing. I always know there's trouble when I've missed calls from Patricia. I was really keen not to put in to the extension rooms that we already had, but more to focus on how do we connect this, how do we use this every day. The beauty of linking it back into the house this way means that you'll use this. It becomes a room in the house because you can see it from everywhere. But if you want to close it down, you can. You just, you know, this now brings you right back to 1930, doesn't it? Yeah. This one connection here just makes the whole house so flexible. Yeah. So now, the, the colour in this, the kind of monolithic, the big, big, strong, and I, I love this. So we've got this kind of one big, chunky grey wall that kind of hides all the surfaces. So you've got your fridges and you've got your larger units and everything in here, and then you've got your utility room. The utility room, it does exactly as it says in the tin, but there's still a really nice design aspect to it. Um, but also it's completely blocked off. The kitchen, I think, is one of my favourite parts. Just There's so much going on, but it's not busy. It's just a really comfortable space. It is just gorgeous, and it's going to be so nice to spend time in. This is one of the best spots in the house. This is my favourite part because of the house now. Because it's the end of the street. So this is where you sit, and you look the whole way back in, and it gives you the longest view. This is, you know, yeah. the hardest working space in the whole house. I think, like, this works here because the level change means that this room becomes a lot more separate. And it's cosy for being completely open and glass. Yeah. It actually has a really warm feel to it as well. And this is by far my favourite. <laughs> I love this. I absolutely love it. My biggest memory of this project is the concrete wall. It has it grown in you? It's now completely in context. And I think it looks great, especially with the stove. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, yeah. I've it, been waiting, it, for it's it. I've been waiting for this reaction. It's still, for it's still growing on me. I do like it. It has certainly grown on me now that you see that, that space become it's so modern and it is such a break with the rest of the house. I love it, I know I do, and I'm genuine about that. I'm not trying to cover, you, you always look at me as if I'm, you're covering this up, Dermot, that's not how it's supposed to be. It's funny, this wall has actually become almost the Marmite wall. People, when they come in, they either love it or hate it. And it's, some people think it's, it's beautiful, they completely get what you were going with, and then others think, has something happened there? Has there been a leak? Um, <laughs> when are you getting that repaired? It's back to the vision. Yeah, it's, it is brilliant, and this is why he's so good at what he does. It's just trying to get to see what the same thing is, as he does. Sometimes it just takes a little bit more time. The timber windows. Well, we got that window changed. They left the bottom rail. You left the bottom rail. I didn't leave the bottom rail. <laughs> I didn't leave the bottom rail. So you didn't change this window, which is good, because it's on the corner. If it was my own personal preference, would have changed the other side as well. But I can see in terms of a little bit more consistency that that side has all stayed that way. And the, the side's changed. The sides have changed, yeah. I don't mind the sides, yeah. the sides work. Like, I think, I'm, I'm delighted the bottom rail didn't go. You and this line. I know, that's my thing. So, all that's really gone for me is the top rail, so I'm happy with that as a compromise. High five all round. Sounds good. Good compromise. Go with it, Claire, okay, go with it. Compromise. Dermot, he's been passionate from day one, and I sort of thought plans would be drawn up and it would be off you go, do them, whereas Dermot's been involved the whole way. Sometimes a bit over when you're picking <laughs> sofas and, uh, Rugs. So, like, these rooms have kind of pretty much stayed as yeah. original, and they really work. Like, they just, it's freshened up, new windows, but it still feels like the old bedroom, doesn't it? Kept the old fireplace, I think it works really well. When I was away, Claire had, Claire had a huge job, job to do. She was sort of my eyes and ears here, and she, she was great. Okay, so do you even get a drawer in here? When Ian first bought the house, I remember saying it would be really nice if the bedroom was just a bedroom and yeah. I think you'd put wardrobes either side for the sake of putting wardrobes in so the wardrobes have gone somewhere else. Show me where they are. <laughs> I just wanted it to be a space where Claire felt like she'd had an input, felt comfortable in and wanted to spend time in. Ah, so this is your space then, is it? Well, it makes sense for Ian as well. I, I see how you've laid it all out it's for Ian. Space. Ian was the client, it's his house, he bought the house, but Claire was overseeing it. And you know, that's not an easy task, but she did it really well. I was kind of worried that you wouldn't even have a drawer in the house, but now I think, does I he, does have, a he have a drawer in the house? It's been fun spending a lot more time here. And now with change of job and all that kind of stuff, it looks like I might be spending a little bit more time here. Listen, it was, we're standing here in front of the famous concrete wall. Uh, did I ever think we'd get to the end of the project? Probably not. But look, it was a great project to work on and I think it's really well executed. The original house, a very well built house, didn't throw us up any, any major surprises. It, it really worked with us. You know, Dara, I have to say, as a builder, absolutely excellent, a pure gem. Nothing was a problem and the quality and the craftsmanship. My gut would tell me, God, I want him to come and do my house. And we're on budget because of Patricia, so. 
Well done. <laughs> really? <laughs> Are we? No, we haven't spoken for yet. Tonight we're on budget, okay? We started here on site with Dara at 155. Ian has decided to do stuff that I suppose was in originally, taken back out, now it's gone back in. And you can see that from the finished product. So we're up at a final account of 190 grand. So there's an uplift of 35 grand in order to get what he wanted. Cheers. When I think back on this project, it just seems to have been endless conversations about the tiniest of little details. But the original house was a very simple layout with beautiful little details. So it was only a really a continuation of that. And that's what architecture is all about. I hope what I've done here has meant that the house can function into the future, but hasn't lost the magic that was already here. Listen, what, you know, what can I say? It's actually horrendous. It's awful news. We can't leave this now. No, no. I don't no think we can. No engineers No. It is. It's shocking. Yeah, it's very nerve-wracking at the moment. There's nothing that resembles a house and uh, we don't have any builders on site. We can't get in and do the work. 